So we're going to continue on starting with the conversion factor. So conversion factor and brightness gain, how are they related? Or like, what do they have to do with each other? Oh, conversion factor is 1% of the brightness gain. Okay. Um, I guess <laughs> the answer I was looking for was traditional way to calculate it is using the brightness gain formula, mm -hmm. but now they use the conversion factor. So conversion factor is basically expression of the luminance that we get at the output phosphor divided by the exposure that happens at the input phosphor. So it's calculating the gain and intensity that we get at the upper phosphor. Typically, when you do the conversion factor formula, the answer that you would get is approximately going to be 1% of your brightness gain value. So if you were to do a problem using the brightness gain, and then if you were to do problem using conversion factor, your answer for your conversion factor will be 1% of your answer for the brightness gain. Because it looks like the division is different. Isn't the other one intensity, meaning I divided by O and now it's O divided by I intensity? Mm -hmm. And you don't have to know the formula or do problems with conversion factor for the test. Just know your brightness gain formula. Which BG equals FG times Yes, I wrote it on the board for you over there. BG. You know it's on your slides, right? <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. I don't see it. Oh, Lord. What is this? What is that? BG. BG. Brightness gain. BG. Oh, we'll say brightness gain. <laughs> I'm looking for That's that. a gain gain. Oh, no, I got it. Yes, so BG is brightness gain, FG is flux gain, MG is magnification. Um, so the higher the conversion factor, that means um, the image intensifier is really good at giving you that image intensity that you need. So the higher the number, the better the efficiency of the image intensifier. Um, so as with any machine or equipment, as it ages and gets older, the quality goes down. So image intensifier's ability to increase brightness goes down with tube age. So to compensate for that, you would have to increase the patient dose, meaning increase the MA, which what would that do to our electrons? Increase. Give you more electrons, right? Yes. And so that would be what you would have to do to get the same level of brightness as the tube ages. So that is increasing patient dose. So as the intensifier ages, you would need more radiation to produce the same level of the output brightness, which is in your worksheet. Yes. <laughs> so for the brightness gain, mm -hmm. you could use a um, formula for that, right? No. And then you just multiply the time and get the conversion factor. Wait, say that again. So for the conversion factor, you mm -hmm. could do the brightness gain. That. Yeah, you just need to know that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so our floral systems or our C arms have something called ABC, which is automatic brightness control. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's that button right there. <coughs> so typically, if techs have the auto button on, they're not really messing with the KDP. It um, sets it for you. So ABC, um, it helps to maintain the overall appearance of the image by controlling the contrast and brightness, and it adjusts the KDP, MA, or both. It's not the same thing as an AEC, it's different. Um, and how it works is by monitoring the current that comes in through the image intensifier, and then also the output phosphor intensifier. So ABC, what it does is controls your KDP or MA or both. 
and so it controls your contrast and brightness on the image that you see on the monitor. The ABC is also known as ABS, Automatic Brightness Stabilization, and it lets you select a desired brightness level. So, where is it? See this right here? If you have that on, it will let you select um, how you want your picture to look super bright or not so bright. Sometimes, um, if you go from let's say the pelvis to like the knee, um, it can get sort of confused and be delayed in how it responds. So if you go from like the hip to the knee and then you still have auto on, sometimes it shows as a lag. So you'll do the x-ray and it'll be like a pause before it finally gives you a bright image. mode. Have y'all noticed this being used mm -hmm. in the OR? Mm -hmm. Mag 1, mm -hmm. Mag 2? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is another function of the image intensifier as well. And what happens when you press Mag 1 and Mag 2 is that it actually increases the voltage that we have at the electrostatic lenses. So when the voltage increases, what do you think happens? It what? moves forward. Not accelerate, but it moves it forward. Moves it to the center even more. So it kind of tightens the stream of electrons. Okay? So let's take a look at this image. Um, look at the line that's straight without any um, breaks in it. Mm -hmm. so let's say that's our regular mode. There's no MAT1, there's no MAT2. It's our regular. So we're using the entire width of the input phosphor. Okay? And then our focal point for that is right up here. However, when we select MAG1 or MAG2, it's going to be more centered on our um, IP. So take a look at the dotted line. So now our electrons have gone more centered. And then what happens to our focal point? It comes more back. So if you have ever seen a flashlight, what happens when we bring the flashlight closer to the wall versus a little further back. It's so if we are, if our focal point is more back, it's a wider spread, right? So that's basically what's happening here. So doing, uh, shifting the focal point further back, it helps us to magnify the image. So the focal point is going back. Mm -hmm. So as the electron stream gets more narrow, the focal point comes further back. So MAG1 or MAG2, only electrons from the center of the IP are interacting with our output phosphor. Uh, can you repeat the, the, the straight line? You said that's using the entire width of the photo cap or? The straight line uh -huh. right now, see how it's all the way at the edge? Uh -huh. So we're using the entire diameter of the input phosphor. Okay. That's normal mode. Okay. But when we do MAG1 or MAG2, we're going in and using the middle section of our input phosphor. What happens to the We're not using the electrons from there. And you said only electrons from the IP are interacting with what? Only electrons from the center of the input phosphor are interacting with our output phosphor, which gives you the appearance of magnification. Um, 
Um, so just to reiterate what we said, let's say um, we have an image identifier that is 30, 23, 15, meaning 30 is the full diameter, 23 will be mag one, and then 15 will be mag two, okay? If we select 23 centimeters of input phosphor, um, outside of these 23 centimeters, the electrons are going to miss and not contribute to creating the image. Okay? So if, I, if we say um, try focus, meaning 30, 23, 15, 30 is the full width, mag one would be 23, and then mag two would be 15. So if you have 30, everything within there then Correct. And then if you have 23, anything that's not inside the 23 is going to not fit. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone confused? Yeah. 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 Please, can you just repeat it once? So we have normal mode, uh -huh. mag one, and mag two, correct? Right. Uh -huh. So typical diameter of the input phosphor is about 30 centimeters. Okay. When we select mag one, it's going to be only 23 centimeters from okay. the inside that we select. And then if we have MAC2, it's going to be only 15 centimeters of the input phosphor that we're gonna work from. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just, yeah, yeah. So this is normal, MAG1, it's a little zoomed in, mm -hmm. MAC2, Super zoomed super in, super and you can see a lot of the details of, on the um, sequence. So this would be 30, 23, 15. Is it okay to do that, or those are just numbers that you're using? Just numbers that I'm using. So magnification, it improves the ability to see small structures. So good spatial resolution, but there's always a negative side to it. What happens is it increases the patient's dose. Does anyone know why? Spatial so resolution. So, so when we select MAG1 or MAG2, what did I say happens to our electrons? It has to go out. It gets narrower. It gets narrow, narrow, right? It narrower. So fewer electrons are being used. So what happens to our image quality if we're using fewer electrons? going down. So to compensate for that, ABC increases the MA. So that's yeah. how it affects patient dose. So the MA goes bigger, mm -hmm. right? The input diameter gets bigger. Just less electrons are used. Yeah, so if once we select MAG1 and 2, we know that our width of the electron stream gets more narrow, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not using the entire amount of electrons that we could use. Mm -hmm. So it makes our image brightness go down. Mm -hmm. But ABC steps in and compensates for that, and it increases the MA even more. So then it affects patient dose. Okay, magnification mode improves spatial resolution. We saw that, we can, we can see a lot more detail. And typical fluoro units have four to six LP per millimeter. So for fluoro, it's four to six line pairs per millimeter for the spatial resolution. <coughs> um, if you had a question regarding magnification factor, it's super easy. Um, if you wanted to find the magnification factor of a 30 centimeter input uh, phosphor, you would take the 30 and then divide it with the centimeters that you're using, which in this case is 15, and so your magnification factor is two. Okay, so you good. would take the full width, mm -hmm. take the centimeters that you want to use, divide it, and that would be your magnification factor. Mm -hmm. So if I asked you, what is the magnification factor for a 30 centimeter um, input phosphor, but you're using 23? 30 divided by 23, that would be your magnification factor. <laughs> All right. Yes. So magnif you know, this is kind of contradicting because whenever we think about magnification, it actually reduces spatial resolution in X-ray. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> but in Floro, do you see how it's a lot more detail that you're able to see? Um, so it improves your special resolution, but it makes your patient dose go up. Um, with fluoro, we do have some image distortion that may or may not happen. Um, it's a shape distortion known as uh, big netting. Big netting. So it's, it creates a pin cushion appearance. So the anatomy that's on the corner, it sort of elongates and has a pin cushion like appearance. So that's caused by inaccurate control or focusing of the electrons on the outside of the input phosphor. This doesn't always happen, but this is just the possibility that could happen. Because our photocathode is curved, sometimes if it's inaccurate or not pro properly focused, um, it can create this artifact. So we know that image noise can happen anytime we have too low of an MA, meaning we don't have enough what? Low MA means too few x-rays are exiting the patient. So, which means fewer electrons are interacting with our output phosphor, creating less uh, brightness. So that's going to give us a grainy or noisy image. Solution to that is increase the MA again. Um, but it's going to be a small increase because fluoro we use lower range of MA. And if you ever need to increase the MA for image brightness, using pulse x-ray beam is encouraged in order to keep the patient dose low. Okay, that's nothing new or crazy. All right, so now we're moving on from the image intensifier and moving upwards to what's happening to our image after it's done uh, with the image intensifier. So originally, um, they used to use a rear view mirror type viewing. So someone would have to sort of have a mirror and view the image that way since they were not in the path of the X-ray beam. But now, in modern days, we are using a TV monitor, right? Everyone has seen it in Floro. Mm -hmm. You can see the image on the TV monitor. Um, and we're gonna get into exactly how that's done. There's two special devices that we use. It's called a camera tube, or we can also use a CCD, charge coupled device. But first we'll talk about the camera tube. So this is the camera tube. It's going to be found right after our output phosphor. It's going to be attached to the output phosphor. So the two types of camera tube that we use today are the Viticon or the Plumbicon, but the Viticon is the most commonly used, okay? The diameter of the Viticon is the same as the output phosphor because that's the one that is attached to, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. And what it is, is basically a diode tube in a glass envelope. Mm -hmm. And what does a diode do? Both mm -hmm. Only allows one in way. one direction, that's right. So once again, we either use a camera tube or a CCD. There's two types of camera tubes, which are the Viticon or the Plumbicon. But the one that we commonly use is the Viticon. And what is a Viticon? It's basically a diode tube in a glass envelope. It has a cathode and an anode. So this is what it looks like, the Viticon camera tube. We have the cathode side, see the electron gun? And then we also have the anode side. See the target? All right. 
<laughs> and so this is the camera lens through which the light comes in. Where is this light coming from? The output phosphor. Remember we stopped at the output phosphor? That's my diagram. After the output phosphor, we have the camera tube. Okay? So I'm gonna break it down step by step. So we have the cathode here, and we also have an electron gun. And what the electron gun is provide a continuous stream of electrons. And where do you think these electrons are going? To the target, just like in an x-ray tube. Um, the cathode is also surrounded by a bunch of coils that do different things. Um, the coils accelerate and precisely control the electron beam right here. And what the electron beam does is go towards the target and it does a special sweeping motion, like a zigzag motion, back and forth from top to bottom, which is known as the raster pattern. It's one million sweeps per minute. Monty, why do you look confused? <laughs> so, I mean, the light photons are coming to the camera lens, right? Yeah, we're gonna get into that in just a okay. second, but mm. I just want you to know what's happening here at the cathode. Okay. We have an electron gun that's sending electron streams towards the target, right? And does it have a special pattern? Yes, it does, which is called the raster pattern. Looks like that. So it's going back and forth from top to bottom. Thank you, Cody. All right, we also have an anode in the camera tube. It has three parts, a face plate, a signal plate, and a target. Stay with me. So the anode has three sections, a face plate, which is on the outside, a signal plate, and then a target. So the face plate is basically the layer that's gonna interact with the output phosphor first. It's on the outside. It's like a lens, okay? The face plate allows transmission of light from the output phosphor. Anyone lost? Yes, so the face plate would be right here. Okay. It's sort of like the camera lens that lets light in, which is coming from where? Yeah. Output yes. phosphor, okay? After the face plate, we have the signal plate. Oh, okay, I see it. See the signal plate right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the signal plate is bonded to the face plate and it's a thin layer of graphite that conducts the electricity. And it also lets in the light. So we have light coming in from the output phosphor, interacting with our face plate, and then it also interacts with our signal plate. Okay? What does the face plate do again? Does it, have it just allows transmission of oh. light. Mm -hmm. um, so important thing about the signal plate is that it's thin enough to allow transmission of light, but it can also conduct electricity. Just know this for now. Don't worry about any other details. So I'm gonna say everything again, because I have some confused looks. So we have the camera tube, this whole thing, which is what? A diode. Diode. Mm -hmm. Yes, Viticon, that's another name for it. Envelope. Mm -hmm. And what are the different parts of this camera tube? We have a Cathode, the cathode and the anode, anode mm -hmm. and then we have three layers, which is the face plate, the signal plate, and the target of the anode, okay? So this is just going more in depth. Yes, I have to tell you guys what's happening at each section. What's the three phases? The so single, the target? <clears throat> we have the face plate on the outside, the signal plate, and then we have the target layer. So they kind of basically like layers. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is all there. This is the 
sorry. <laughs> so we already talked about the face plate and the signal plate. Now what are we going to talk about? So our anode has a target layer, which is made of antimony trisulfide. It's up there. In viticon tubes. If it's a plomicon tube, it's going to be lead oxide. Don't worry about plomicon. This is just FYI. Just know that it's antimony trisulfide in viticon. Oh, that's cool. That's Is made of yeah. antimony trisulfide. Okay. But we don't have to know. Don't know. You don't need to know plumbing. So the important thing about the target layer is that it is both a conductor and an insulator. It can act as both. What's a conductor? Allows electricity to flow through it. <laughs> um, so if the light that comes in from our output phosphor passes the face plate and the signal plate, um, if it interacts with the target layer, we can conduct electricity. Okay? So we can act as both. So how does it all work? So we have the electron beam, where's my electron beam, right there, this is the cathode, okay? Mm -hmm. We have the electron beam at the cathode doing its thing, the raster pattern, mm -hmm. and it's aiming at the target. target. At the same time, we have light coming in from the output phosphor, mm -hmm. right? We have our signal plate and our target layer also. So what happens is if light and electrons meet at the same place at the same time, we have an electric signal. So you have, you have light coming on one side, and you have yeah. electrons coming on so, the yeah. side. So pretend and this is our image intensifier, little, right? and we have our output phosphor, light's traveling this way, right? right. And, and then, then we have our camera tube. Right. So if light's going through our face plate and signal plate meeting mm -hmm. at the target, mm -hmm. and our electron beam is coming also through. meeting at the target, if they both come together at the same place, same time, we create an electric signal. And um, just so you know, I said it's a conductor and an insulator. So there are spots where they don't meet and nothing <coughs> happens. So for electric signal to happen, electron beam and light need to interact on the target layer, same place, same time. And uh, both together forms what? Or? <laughs> Or creates what? So if electron beam and the light are incident on the same place at the same time, electrons are transmitted through the target to the signal plate, creating electric signal. If electron beam is in a different place, target is going to act as an insulator. We're not going to create any electric signal. Yes. And signal plate, why is it called a signal plate? Because it carries this current as a signal to our TV. That's how we see the image. I believe that's Three more slides for today. Three more slides for today. I don't want to break y'all's brain too much. So did I explain that good? Yes. Okay. Let's go from the top. Yeah. To make sure. I'm sure. Okay. I'll do it. Well, I'm sure somebody else had the same question. Yes. Go ahead and give it a So once again. Jay, Jay, were you paying attention, Jay? Yeah. Okay. So we have what layer of our camera?
number two is interacting with their alpha philosopher. The, 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 no, the first, the base plate. plate. The base plate allows light to be transmitted, right? So the light comes in through the base plate and the signal plate um, to the target. But while this is happening, what's happening at the cathode? Lights. The electrons. The electrons on creating the raster pattern on our target, right? And lights coming in through also. And then when they meet, what happens? Electrical electric signal, which is carried by the signal plate. Signal plate. Signal plate to the T. That's a long part. Current as an electric signal to the tele television monitor. So, um, uh, what is the target made of? Antimony and uh, antimony sulfide. and something. Antimony it's sulfide. 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 Yeah. That's not my name. My next job. Antimony sulfide. Uh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we covered the camera tube now. What was the other option of creating a uh, image on, on TV? CCC. Which is a charge coupled device. You guys are familiar with this. Um, so it's a device that generates an electric charge when stimulated by light. Okay stores the charge in a capacitor, you're familiar with this, yeah. and then once the charge is stored in a capacitor, the charge is sent as an electric signal to the TV, um, so each charge that's um, stored is read, okay. and it's sent to the TV to create the image. And that's all you need to know about the CCD. And that's it, I'm out. <laughs> that's all. So Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so the, the signal layer's purpose, like... Signal plate? The, or signal plate, sorry. Mm -hmm. Is it's going to take that signal to the... TV. TV. Mm -hmm. Did it have another thing that it said that it does? Is that, like, is that the it conducting, like, the... Uh, let's I think there's something earlier. Or, or was no, that was a target layer that can either be a conductor uh, or an insulator. Okay. But the signal plate just light lets light through to the target. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, mm -hmm. so it also lets light through. Mm -hmm. But its main purpose, yes. I guess, would be. Yes, Monty. So the CCD is made out of pixels or just CCD? I thought pixels was just on the image. Um, so the CCD is actually rows and rows of pixels. And these pixels store the information about the image. Mm -hmm. And then each of those pixels are red, which create our image. Because usually like, we know that pixels is actually a picture mm -hmm. that we see. Because I know like a TFT had um, Dells. Mm -hmm. Um, CCD it was just CCD, but it was like small CCDs, and all together will be tally or something. Yes. <laughs> um, so this is saying that CCD is made out of pixels too. So yes, it has tiny little squares that act as pixels to store the image information. side the electrons come together to target so when they both meet up they create the electrical signal and that's carried to the TV. Mm -hmm. Or am I missing a slide? Missing something. Uh, let me get that right. Oh, I understood it. 